From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Mrs. Gramley, Mr. Dollar. Oh, good. I understand you were trying to reach me. I just told your nephew, Walter, that if he didn't have you on this phone within three minutes, I'd be out there at the ranch with a posse of police. Oh, I'm afraid there's some mistake, Mr. Dollar. You see, I... I told Walter I didn't wish to talk with you. You what? I admire your persistence, young man, but... Are you saying this of your own free will? You're not being forced? How ridiculous. Who's there with you? Just my nephew, Walter, and his wife, Hilda. Sure. I'm coming out there, Mrs. Gramley. Mr. Dollar, you were sent out here from Hartford to investigate an insurance trust I was arranging for my granddaughter. Well, I've decided not to set up the trust, so there's no further reason to involve yourself in my affairs. Good night, Mr. Dollar. Hello. Hello. What have you got cooking with the Gramleys anyway, Mr. Shut up, Nikki. Let me think. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Las Vegas, Nevada, to the home office Amicon Northern Trust Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the matter of reasonable doubt. Expense account, final page. Item 12, 75 cents. I had a pint of black coffee sent in for Nikki Vernon, girlfriend of missing casino operator Deuce McCoy. She'd been overworking a bottle of scotch, and I figured the coffee would help clear the fumes. And it might have if she'd drunk it. No, take it away. I don't want any coffee. I couldn't figure that phone call from Mrs. Gramley. She knew her nephew and his wife had been stealing from her. That's why she'd started to set up the trust to save the estate from them and turn it over to her young granddaughter, Susan. And she knew also, I told her, that Walter and his wife had probably contrived the auto accident that had killed Susan's parents. And yet now she seemed to have reversed her whole attitude. Maybe Jonas Parks had been right. Maybe there was a reasonable doubt as to her sanity. Uh, maybe a lot of things. But all of the answers were out there at that ranch. She's to blame for it. Things were all right with Deuce and Meadle. She came messing around. If it hadn't been Hilda, it would have been somebody else. The whole lot you know about it. Oh, why don't you drink some of that coffee, Nikki? I don't want any coffee. Okay, okay, suit yourself. Go ahead and enjoy your broken heart, then. Kill the rest of that bottle, if that's what you want. Cry up a storm. Live it up. Wallow in it. I'll get that, Dame. It's the last thing I ever do. For what? You ought to thank her for getting that rat off your neck. What'd you have to turn him in for? Deuce never did anything to you. He never had the chance. Well, what's he supposed to have done that's so horrible? It's more what he tried to do. Oh, sure. You happen to know young Susan Gramley? Yeah, I've seen the kid. Why? Well, your lover boy phoned her out at the ranch earlier this evening, disguised his voice, said he was a friend of mine. He tried to get her to meet him on the old boulder cutoff out in the middle of the desert. If you think Deuce would try to date up a 16-year-old kid... You're crazy. Nikki, I think he was going to kill a 16-year-old kid. It's her fault. Hilda Gramley. She and her sneaky little henpecked husband got Deuce mixed up in something. I don't imagine he was very hard to mix. That dame's been asking for it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, I know, and you're about ready to give it to her. Well, forget it. Sober up, find the nearest exit, and then run like the devil. I want Deuce. So do the police. And they're the ones who are going to get him. They're covering the airport now, the depot, all the highways. Vegas is a tough town to get away from. He hasn't got a chance. It's just as much your husband's fault. Why didn't he keep her at home? Why did he... Oh, for the love of... You keep on playing that same old record, you're going to wear a groove right through your brain. Maybe so. Now, look, I got things to do. Are you going to be all right here alone? Well, I'm just fine. I never felt better in my life. Then you've already got it halfway made. So why don't you double up and get even? Try some of that coffee. You're a real busy guy, Mr. Dollar. You put the finger on a man with one hand, and at the same time, you try to sober up his girl with the other. Sure. And if I had a broom, I'd sweep the office. Well, then why don't you go be busy someplace else? That's exactly the idea. All right, kid, you're on your own. Good luck, Nikki. Good luck? Huh. What do you care what kind of luck I have? Oh, I don't know. 
picked up my car and drove out across the desert toward the Flint Rock Ranch. I couldn't quite imagine Mrs. Gramley being intimidated. The idea of Walter and Hilda standing over her, holding a gun at her head and making her say things against her will was pretty unbelievable. Faced with a threat like that, she'd probably say, shoot and be blasted. It just didn't make sense. Apparently, she really had reversed her field. But I had to hear it from her face to face. Who is it? Johnny Dollar, open up. I said open up. What's the idea? Mrs. Gramley told you to stay away from here, didn't she? I don't know. There was static in the phone. I want to hear her say it again. You don't what mind do you think you're doing? Coming in. All right, Walter, let's go talk to Mrs. Gramley. Look, Dollar, you haven't got that much weight to throw around. Suppose we get it straight right now and save a lot of time. I came out here to talk to Mrs. Gramley, and I'm going to talk to her. Now, if you want to go at it bare knuckle, let's get started. Or if you're thinking of that gun routine again, go ahead and pull it. I'm packing one myself. And if you're not going to make any kind of a move, then you just stand right there with your face hanging out while I go on What's in and talk. What's going on in here, Walter? Good evening, Mrs. Gramley. The dollar won't take no for an answer. He just forced his way in. I'm glad to find you looking so well. I thought I'd made myself clear on the phone, Mr. Dollar. Really? Come on, let's go on into the living room where we can all be more comfortable. Come back here. I must insist that you leave at once. Who was at the door? What are you doing here? Well, if it isn't Hilda, the lovely lady who likes money, gifts, and excitement. Fine, fine. That's why I came out, to stir up a little excitement. I think you're taking a good deal upon yourself, Mr. Dollar. You know, I'm a little surprised at you, Mrs. Gramley. I thought you wanted me to follow the case through. There is no case. Oh, since when? You heard what she said. That's what you came for. All right, now beat it. Down, Walter. Mrs. Gramley, are you telling me you're going to drop this whole thing, let this pair here edge you out and Susan along with you and take the whole estate? You can put any interpretation on it you like. Just as long as you leave this house at once and please don't come back. You have no right to interfere. And what about your son and his wife? Have you forgotten that those two leeches there killed them? You're out of your mind. Am I? What do you think, Mrs. Gramley? Am I out of my mind? I'm... I'm afraid you are. My son and his wife were killed in an automobile accident. A terrible tragedy, but unavoidable. Sure it was, after Walter and Hilda here set it up. Will you please leave now? Have they threatened you? Is that it? Are you scared to talk? Because if you are, speak up. I imagine I can handle them. You're being quite ridiculous, Mr. Dollar. Will you now go, please? It beats me. It really does. If I hadn't... I'll answer it. Hello? Who? If that's for me, you better let me take it. They know I'm here. All right. Take it. Nobody's stopping you. It was Will Connors on the phone. He'd been keeping in close touch with the police, and he was calling to tell me what had happened. Deuce McCoy had been arrested. He'd been picked up at the airport trying to board a plane and was being taken to the city jail. I hung up the phone and told the three of them what Will had said. That touched off the fuse. Arrested? Deuce has been arrested? At the airport? I don't get it. But you will get it, Walter. Deuce will talk. He'll spill the whole thing. And I think we'll be able to make a case against you and Hilda even without Mrs. Gramley's testimony. Susan, was she with him? Is she all right? Mrs. Gramley, Susan has been in my hotel room with Will Connors for the last... So that was the hold they had over you. They told me this man Deuce had phoned her and tricked her into meeting him. Susan doesn't trick so easy. She called me Get and Get your I... hands up, Dollar. Oh, now, it's a little late for a gun, Walter. You won't find it any easier to run than Deuce did. He's right, Walter. Let me think. There must be Let some way... Let you think... That's what I've been doing for the last ten years, and you thought us right into this. Walter! The airport. You know what he was doing? He was running out. The kid didn't show. He knew something had gone wrong, and he was taking a powder. And not even telling me. There's no time now to... Left us here holding the bag. And now you say, let me think. Why didn't you think before? It was your idea cutting him in on this. Oh, she's got a lot of cute ideas. Nicky. She's a real little brain. What the devil are you doing here? Slumming, Mr. Dollar. The door was open, so I walked in. You mind? Look, whoever you are. Look what, sucker? I've seen guns before. Why didn't you use it on them? When they were playing you for their number one patsy. What are you talking about? Deuce McCoy. 
and that little sneak you're married to there. You mean you still don't know? She's lying, Walter. Don't you wish I was? They had you right in the middle, sucker. Deuce was taking it away from me on the tables, and little Hildy was getting it back from him after hours. I bet they got a lot of laughs out of it. Better hand over that gun, Walter. It's true, isn't it, Hilda? Of course not. Take a gun to him, huh? Well, maybe it's not too late. Walter, what are you going to do? Give me the gun, Walter. Sure. Why not? I don't need it now. He killed her. His own wife. Stood right there and shot her down in cold blood. Did you call the police, Mrs. Graham? Yeah, tell them to hurry right out. They can take me in on a real charge now. I didn't mean for her to get killed. You know something, Dollar? No. Suppose you tell me. That's the first big move I've made in the last ten years. That Hilda didn't plan. <laughs> Expense account item 14, $305.20. Hotel and incidentals in Las Vegas and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $596.45. End of account. Remarks? Well... I can't figure out why she had to go messing around that way when she already had a man of her own, her husband. Of course, it didn't amount to much, but not many men do. What'd you expect to find in this world? Pearls in all her oysters? A turkey in her soup? Well, that was Nikki, and that's the report. And that's life. Come to think of it, though, what isn't? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's intriguing story. Next week, Indestructible Mike. The most amazing character I ever met. A man with nine lives, at least. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Les Crutchfield, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Susan Whitney, Richard Crenna, Jeanette Nolan, Forrest Lewis, Inga Adams, Paul Richards, and Gene Tatum. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino and Carl Fortina. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.